This lecture is going to cover patient safety in medication administration. As allied healthcare professionals, we play a crucial role in ensuring that the patient safely receives medication. To help with the safe administration, we always follow the seven rights of medication administration. That's to ensure that we have the right patient, the right drug, the right dose, the right time, the right route, the right technique, and the right documentation. Let's go over these important rights in a little more detail. So first is the right patient. Prior to medication administration, you need to identify your patient. And you need two identifiers like the patient's full name and date of birth prior to giving any medication. Their room number is not an identifier. You should also compare the medication record with the patient's ID band. This is especially important when you have geriatric or pediatric patients. The next is the right drug. To ensure that we have the correct medication, we check the medication three times before administration always. We check the label before we take the bottle from the shelf, before we pour, and before we put it back. Now, how these three checks play out may vary according to your physical medication setup, but always check your meds three times. Next is to take caution with look-alike, sound-alike medications. A significant amount of errors happen because of this. Many facilities will have a look-alike, sound-alike list posted in your medication room to help you stay aware and to stay safe. An example of this would be Oxycontin and Oxybutrin. Wow, this would be a huge error if these medications were mixed up. Oxycontin is an opiate for severe pain, and Oxybutrin is an anticholinergic for an overactive bladder. Here are some more things to think about when we're talking about the right drug. You know, a black box warning is a label put on a prescription drug by the FDA to call attention to serious or life-threatening risks attached to that medication. All facilities have a black box warning list, and the nurse should be aware of these. You know, note that in some of your nursing drug handbooks, these black box meds are labeled as high alert instead of black box. So these black box medications like heparin and insulin, many facilities require that these medications are checked by two nurses prior to administration. They also have to be signed by two nurses when they are administered. The last thing to think about is only administer medications that you prepared or those that have been prepared by a licensed pharmacist. Once you have the right medication, you need to ensure that it's the right dose. If the dosage seems inappropriate, do not give that drug until you confirm it. Safety should always be maintained when calculating a drug dose. If the dosage is questionable or fractional dosages are calculated, have another nurse check behind you. Double check your math. Age is an important factor to consider when we're talking about the right dosage. There are many physical changes in the geriatric patient which can have a big impact on drug dosage. These are decreased absorption, and this is due to diminished GI function and congestion of abdominal blood vessels. Slow distribution happens because of low plasma protein levels, which lead to a larger amount of unbound drug, resulting in increased drug action. Altered liver and kidney functions can lead to accumulation of medications. Polypharmacy is defined as taking multiple medications for more than one problem. Multiple medications increase the risk of drug interactions and side effects. Pediatric medication dosages are most often calculated by weight. Miscalculations can be devastating due to the infant's size. With premature infants, Metabolism and excretion may be impaired, and their central nervous system is more susceptible to the effects of medication. 
Medications need to be given at the correct time. Know your standard abbreviations. For example, Q6H is every six hours. You know, most facilities order medications using military time, so make sure you're familiar with that. There are some medications that are routinely given throughout the day. For example, diuretics or water pills are usually given in the morning. Sleep pills are given at night. Before giving any PRN medication, which means as needed, check the patient's chart to ensure that you're within that right time frame. Next is the right route. Knowing where to give the medications is important, and the route of administration should never be substituted for another unless you have a physician's order. Is the route appropriate? Is the patient vomiting? An antiemetic should not be given orally. Know the proper way to administer a medication. Use the right technique for all forms of medication, whether they're eye drops, pills, or suppositories. Choose the appropriate site for injections. Use the right muscle, the right angle, the right needle size. Nerve damage can happen with improper technique. The right documentation is the final right. Do not document medications until after they're given. If the patient refuses, document all pertinent information. If a medication is not given, document when and why. Now we're going to take a look at a few other things to consider that can affect medication administration. Nutrition and physical activity is a factor to consider in medication administration. Diet. How's the diet? You know, a poor diet can reduce therapeutic levels. When has the patient eaten last? Some medications are best taken with food and some without. Antibiotics are best taken on an empty stomach. Food interactions. You know, many drugs can be altered by foods, so check your drug resource for any food interactions. Grapefruit juice is a big offender of this. I have read that up to 50% of medications can be affected by grapefruit juice. So, how this works is that grapefruit juice, it inhibits a major enzyme in the liver responsible for metabolizing drugs. Grapefruit juice inhibits that enzyme. Grapefruit juice can actually increase the availability of medications like Lipitor by 300%. Wow! Average body weight is another factor to consider. You know, drug dosages are based on average body weight of 150 pounds. So when you see that Tylenol bottle and it says to take two tablets, that's based on an individual that weighs 150 pounds. If a patient's very thin or obese, dosages may need to be adjusted. Lastly is exercise. You know, exercise can influence metabolism and increase speed of absorption of medications. For example, exercise decreases the need for insulin. There are differences with gender when it comes to medication. Men typically have more muscle than fat, so medications are absorbed and distributed faster. Metabolism is a consideration. Men tend to have faster metabolisms than women. Hormones can also affect medication. Antidepressants affect men and women differently due to their differences in hormones. Smoking causes increased metabolism of drugs. It induces liver enzymes to metabolize drugs more rapidly. That's how it works. A patient who smokes may need larger doses of liver metabolized drugs. This effect may last for months. Another consideration is culture. You know, cultures, some may believe, may have beliefs that are grounded in science, and they're more likely to depend on primary health care providers to choose drugs. More holistic cultures may believe that imbalances cause disease, and they're less likely to use conventional drugs, but maybe are more inclined to use herbs or alternative healers. Pregnancy is another thing to consider. Several issues arise in medication administration for the, pa for the pregnant patient. The blood placental barrier protects the fetus from certain medications. Fat-soluble medications are more likely to cross over, leading to possible death or severe malformations of the fetus. Medications that cause malformation or death are known as teratogenic meds. 
The fetus is most vulnerable during the first trimester when vital organs are forming. There is also an increased vulnerability to the accumulation of medications during the third trimester. You know, there's the FDA pregnancy risk categories, and this indicates the potential of a drug to cause birth defects if used during pregnancy. There are categories A, B, C, D, and X. Category A shows that adequate and well-controlled studies show no risk to the fetus. On the other end of this category is category X, which shows that studies in animals and humans have demonstrated fetal abnormalities. These medications should not be given. Pregnancy category ratings are given with each medication in your nursing drug books. Patients with liver and kidney disorders have an increased potential to build up drugs and the risk of toxic effects are increased. Note that patients with chronic alcohol abuse may have decreased liver functions. When considering the kidneys, some medications are excreted unmetabolized through the kidneys. This can destroy the kidneys and those with kidney disease risk accumulating toxic amounts of drugs. The heart is responsible for how a medication is distributed throughout the circulatory system. Congestion of the blood vessels lead to decreased drug absorption and delivery of the drug to the liver. This also compromises kidney function, leading to delayed excretion. All right, medication abbreviations. Make sure that you learn the medication abbreviations. Knowledge of these abbreviations is especially important during medication administration to prevent errors and keep the patient safe. The signature part of the prescription instructs the patient when and how to take the medications. Can you interpret the SIG or signature on this prescription? It says Lipitor, one tablet by mouth, every day. Also consider abbreviations that need to be avoided. The Joint Commission, which is an organization that accredits healthcare organizations, has published a do not use abbreviation list, which is usually available in all institutions that you would work. U, for example, means units, and this is one of those do not use abbreviations. As you see in this example, four units of Humalog insulin could be confused with the number 44 which if given would cause a serious overdose of insulin. Also get clarity from the doctor if you see these kind of things written. If a decimal point is used, like in the digoxin order, a zero must always be used before the decimal point or again, serious fatal drug dosages may be given. Well, this wraps up patient safety and medication administration. As always, bring your questions to the Farm Cafe or to class.